Lubbock, the place to be. Built by the visionaries that chose to plant their roots and make the hub their home. Cultivated by the innovators today who continue to grow and transform our future. Lubbock is the place to be. Hi, I'm Destiny and I'm the owner of Sugar and Six Soap Company. Initially, I was a teacher, so I taught for five years. I earned my degree in early childhood education, and then I went on to get a master's. And all while I did that, I still, um, I still kind of did stuff from home. I guess my entire adult life, I, I was, I enjoyed being crafty and making things and learning and you know doing the research and teaching myself. And so it's kind of always a thing as an adult. Um, I guess that started pretty early on. I realized that I wanted to start the business when I realized what a demand there was for natural products. My daughters, when they were younger, they had super sensitive skin and they wanted to use the bath bombs from Target and you know, the, the fun bubble baths and they couldn't because their skin was so sensitive. And I thought, you know, I could probably figure out a natural alternative so that they can still enjoy these kinds of things. You know, I got on Pinterest, I found some blogs and realized that it was relatively simple to make, you know, bath bombs or um, bath salt, bubble bath. And so I just kind of started experimenting and my daughters loved the, the things and they, their skin did fine. Um, it actually improved when we stopped using commercial bath products. So I kind of thought, you know, maybe other people would enjoy this too. And it turns out they did. There was definitely a market for it. I began selling things on Facebook, just to like friends and family, and then it kind of, it kind of evolved. The, the, the demand was higher, uh, so I decided to start, you know, a small business kind of thing with Etsy. It expanded a little bit from Facebook to Etsy. Etsy got a little bit um, busier, and so then I decided to offer a website so that um, I could reach more people, and it just continued to grow. It was it was a really cool experience to watch it from literally, you know, making things at my kitchen counter to opening a store. So it's neat to watch how it's grown. The most memorable obstacle that I've overcome was actually opening the store. It was very scary. At home, it's a little bit safer. You know, if, you know, if things don't sell, it's not a big deal. If people aren't interested anymore, not a big deal. When you commit to opening a store, there's overhead expenses, there's you know signing a lease and agreeing that we're gonna make this work for at least five years. Thinking about hiring employees, it wouldn't just be me anymore and I would have to be okay with letting, you know, let somebody else help me grow that dream. It was a lot, but I, I vividly remember watching the company bring, but they brought the sign for the outside of the building on this huge truck. And I just remember it pulling up and just crying because it was such a, like, it was such a real moment that we're actually doing this and, and the things that I have made are good enough to be sold in a store. It was just very, I don't know, very gratifying, very rewarding. I would absolutely do it all over again. It's, it's been challenging. There have been tears, but there's also been lots of happy tears. It's, it's hard to be a business owner, especially um, a woman in business. There have been lots of hard times, but it's been a learning experience for me and I feel like I'm stronger because of it.